All right, good morning, everyone. We are gonna go ahead and get started. We'll probably have some people who um, join us after we get going, but I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. So welcome to the MS and Finance online information session. This will hopefully give you an idea of some of the finer details of our program here um, in terms of the curriculum, the career outcomes, and the application process. So before we get started, um, if you have a question, please uh, type that into your um, Zoom chat feature you should have off to the right. I will be holding a um, question and answer session um, at the end where if any questions do come up, you'll be able to um, have those answered live. So please chat um, any questions that you have. I'll read through those at the end and get to any that we haven't addressed. Um, this session will be recorded. So if there's anything that um, I go too quickly through or that you just wanna see again, um, please just reach out to me. This will be available as a link to our YouTube channel. So the full session, including the slides will be recorded and you'll have access to those. And then if any of you have dialed in, if you could please make sure to mute your phone so that we could um, eliminate some of that background noise just to make sure that everybody can hear clearly but um, we'll go ahead and get started so quick introduction for those of you I haven't um, gotten to work with directly yet my name is Bruce Watson I'm the Associate Director of Admissions and Recruitment here at the WP Carey School of Business I am the uh, prime recruiter working with the MS in Finance program but I also work with a number of our other specialized master's programs as well. So I know a few of you may still be considering um, a number of our programs here, and I am happy to um, either answer those questions for you if you are looking at a different MS degree or um, connect you to the team that works specifically with that. But hopefully most of you have um, decided that the MS in finance is the direction that you'd like to go. So with that in mind, here is what we will cover today. I will discuss um, some of the highlights and the structure of the program, you know, some of the uh, key takeaways for why you might want to do this particular MS degree and why you would want to do it here at WP Carey. I will go quickly through the application and admissions process. I know we do have a number of folks on the call that are in different stages. Some of you have started the application, some of you have just begun looking at the program, and some of you are waiting on an admissions decision. So I'll try to keep that um, as general as I can. I will go through the curriculum and show you a sample schedule of what you could um, expect in a general way um, in terms of hours devoted to class time, when you'll be in class, what those classes are. I'll then go through some of the possible career outcomes for doing the MS in finance program and then answer some of those questions toward the end. So I will put up some of the frequently asked questions that I receive as the recruiter for this program and then I will open it up to all of you to ask any questions that you might have for me. So in terms of um, highlights for the MS finance program, so this is one of our nine month masters of science programs. And of course it does get students ready to go into a career in the finance industry. Of course, the applications for that are pretty broad and I'll be going over some of the possible career outcomes. But if you um, are looking at pretty much any industry that makes anything or does anything or invests in anything, they are going to have a finance department. And so the applications of this program are very, very broad. As I mentioned, it is a nine month um, master's degree. It does hold classes on campus here at our Tempe location. So that is our main campus. At this point in time, we do not offer any online or part-time courses. And the classes are held Monday through Thursday during the day. So we get a lot of questions about whether students can continue to work during this program. Typically, if a student's working, it is in some kind of part-time capacity. Um, working full-time with this kind of schedule is not generally possible. And um, later on, when we get into what the calendar and the schedule looks like, you will um, hopefully begin to understand why. For any of our international students on the phone, this is a STEM designated program. So if you are coming, um, if you are joining us from another country, there are as many as 36 months of OPT available following the program. So that would be time to stay in the US and get uh, full-time work experience after the program wraps up. And then um, another question that we get pretty frequently is um, whether there is a spring start, a fall start, a summer start. This program only begins once each year 
and the classes are taken between August and May. So the classes start in the fall. All of our on-campus uh, programs begin in August. For those of you joining us from maybe a little further away, out of the country, across the country, whatever the case may be, we do recommend that if you're admitted into any of our on-campus programs, you do plan to be here by August 1st. Orientation is generally in the first couple of weeks of August, and then classes usually start around the 19th or the 20th. So um, just to give you an idea, the schedule does um, begin in August, and then you would be finished by May of the following year. So if you are applying for the fall of 2020, those classes start in August, you would graduate May of 2021. Um, as far as how we break that time down, the nine month period is broken into a quarter system. So you'll take two quarters in the fall and two quarters in the spring. So it's a total of 12 classes over the nine months or 32 credits. And then one of the biggest highlights of our program is that we are associated with the CFA Institute. So this program does prepare you to sit for levels one and two of the CFA exam. It's not a requirement and it is something that you would do after you graduate, but in terms of the hours needed to take that exam, you would be prepared to sit for levels one and two as a graduate. So as far as the admissions and the application process is concerned, many of you know this because you've either be, um, begun an application or submitted an application, but for those of you who are still searching and looking around, um, our application goes live every year on September 1st. So we are currently taking applications for the class that starts in the fall of 2020 in August. Our requirements are very similar to every other school that you might be considering, and they're going to be pretty similar as well to um, your undergraduate experience. So we do have an online application and the application fee. So for domestic students, that fee is $70. If you're an international student, that fee is $115. The fee for international students does include the cost to ship your I-20 documents. So if you are admitted into the program and you are going to be attending on any kind of visa, you will need an I-20 from us. Um, so that cost is included in your application fee if you are admitted into the program. One of our other base level requirements is scores from either the GMAT or the GRE. Now we get this question all the time about whether this is mandatory. And um, in general, we do see scores coming from most of our applicants, but we do have a limited number of waivers available for competitive students. So in order to request a GMAT or GRE waiver, a student needs to have a 3.0 uh, cumulative GPA from a finance program or a 3.25 GPA in a STEM certified field. So those would be things like biology, chemistry, technology, engineering, mathematics, statistics, things like that. And then um, you would put in a request for the waiver when you submit your application. I do want to highlight that even if you have these, uh, the GPAs and these majors listed on the screen, the waivers are not guaranteed at that level. Um, the admissions committee does make each decision separately on a case by case basis. So you're able to request the waiver if you fit into one of those two boxes here on the screen, but just please know that they are not guaranteed. My advice is to prepare to sit for one of these exams. We do not have a preference as to which one you submit scores for. So I would say start doing the prep. You're welcome to request the waiver if you do fall into one of these two boxes, but there is a possibility that that waiver cannot be approved. So if that's the case, at least you will have done some prep to sit for one of these exams and you won't be delayed um, by too much. But those are the requirements to request the waiver. We do also require one letter of recommendation. This can be from either a professional or an academic source. So it could be someone that you've worked with or for. It could even be a client. It could be um, your supervisor, a coworker. The majority of the students that enter this program are coming directly from their undergraduate. So most of our students will use a professor. If you're going to use a professor, it's helpful to use someone that teaches in a subject that is either finance or a similar field. So econ or accounting, someone who can speak to your ability to um, handle the rigor of a program like this. In terms of um, anyone that you can't use, the only real rule that we have in place is that it can't be anyone related to you. Um, other than that, you're pretty much welcome, again, to use any professional or academic source. In order to submit the letter, um, it's a very easy process. We do this a little bit differently than some other schools that you might be looking at. When you begin your online application, you will simply be asked to submit this person's email address during the online application process. So we will reach out to them 
personally once we receive their email address from you and they will click a link that we send them and they will answer questions. So it's not as if they have to write just a general letter that they've probably written a hundred times. They will be answering specific questions about you once you provide their email address to us in your application. There are then a set of essay questions. These are available on our website now. You don't actually have to have an application started in order to um, access the essay questions. So it is um, something that we make public. The essay questions will ask you a few different things. Um, it will be about why you want to do the program, where you would like to be after the program, things like that. And then um, the essay question is also where you would um, ask for the GMAT or GRE waiver if you are in one of those two categories up in the, at the top of the screen here. So the essay question um, under the final one will ask you if you fit into one of those two categories, and if so, um, ask you for a little bit of explanation why you think you should um, be granted a GMAT or GRE waiver. Once we have everything else that you see on the screen, the admissions committee is usually able to get back to you about that waiver request within a couple of days. Generally, three to five business days is our, is our turnaround time. Um, the next thing that we will need as part of the application process will be your transcripts. You are able to upload an unofficial copy of your transcript during the online application, or you can mail us your official copies, um, a hard copy by mail. If you are admitted into the program, we will require official transcripts anyway, so some students do choose to just get that out of the way up front and send the official transcripts first. That's totally fine. If you are using unofficial transcripts, you will have one chance to upload this during the online application process, and they need to all be in one single document. So if you have multiple degrees, if you have multiple bachelor's degrees, or maybe you have a bachelor's and a master's already, if you're going to do the unofficial transcript upload, everything needs to be in a single document. So please keep that in mind. And then again, if you are admitted, we will require official copies anyway before you start your classes in August. If you are an international student joining us on um, the call today, we do have English proficiency requirements that um, you have to meet at the university level. The tests that we accept for admission would be the TOEFL, the IELTS, or the PTE. Um, there are certain waivers for these as well. If you already have um, a degree from the U.S., even if you were born somewhere else, if you have a completed degree from the U.S. already, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, we are generally able to waive that. Or if your transcript from your undergrad is from another country and it explicitly says that you were taught in English, we are generally able to waive it for that as well. Um, if you are coming from outside of the country and you're applying, um, just please check our English proficiency requirements on the website and feel free to reach out to me. I can help you answer those questions. Generally speaking, if your degree was completed outside of the U.S., if your transcript does not say it was in English, you will have to provide scores for these. For anyone in the country on the phone, if you are a domestic student, if you um, have a degree from the U.S., you can ignore this part. There's nothing that you will have to do to prove English proficiency. And then um, our final piece is a uh, professional resume. So when you are doing your online application, you'll have, an, uh, you'll have a chance to upload a resume into the system as well. Generally, Word documents or PDFs are what is recommended, and this resume should really highlight your accomplishments. This uh, program does not require that you have any specific work experience. So um, the resume can highlight anything that you've done. It can be projects, it can be internships, maybe you had a work study position at your undergrad, it can be anything that you want. It just needs to include the dates that you did those things and it needs to highlight what you accomplished in those roles. So most of you already will have some of these pieces done because most people will have a resume on hand. Most people will have someone in mind to use a, as a letter of recommendation. So, Generally speaking, the application, even though it looks like there are a lot of things to submit here, it generally does go pretty quickly with um, those test scores for the GMAT and GRE being the part that usually takes the longest. In terms of what you can expect for the admissions timeline, so we'll just go through this quickly. We'll start at the top left. So you'll begin your application on our website. You will work with the recruiter. Um, for finance, it's usually going to be me directly. So you will work with the recruiter until your app is complete. And then we do have a set of deadlines, which I will show you toward the end of the presentation. Our deadlines do refer to completed applications. So our next deadline coming up is December 3rd. So if you are hoping to get your application in by that deadline, we will need all of those components that I mentioned on the previous screen. 
Next, you will get a notification from your recruiter that the application is complete, meaning that we've received everything that we need and your file is going to go into review with our admissions committee. Once you receive that email, we are generally able to get you a decision within seven to 10 business days. So we do have a very quick turnaround time. We do admit on a rolling basis here, so you won't have to wait too long to get your decision. If you are able to submit your um, application relatively quickly, you can certainly still get in by this December 3rd um, deadline. And then for decision day, um, you're going to get one of two decisions for the most part. A student is either going to be admitted into the program or you are going to be denied admission for this term. If you're admitted, you'll keep going on through this process. If you are denied, it is our final decision for this year, but you would still be welcome to apply to any other programs that we offer, and you would still be welcome to apply for a future term. Again, this program does only start in the fall, so if you, let's say, were denied admission for the fall of 2020, the earliest you would be able to apply for finance again would be the fall of 2021 term. So let's say everyone's admitted, we'll keep moving on in the process. Admitted students have three weeks to accept their offer from the time our offer is made. The uh, program does have a limit on how many students it can accept every year, so we do put that in place so that you can accept your offer to save your seat. And saving your seat involves making a $500 deposit. This deposit is non-refundable, but it does get applied to your fall tuition, so you do get it back once you start the program in terms of a tuition credit. And then there are also a couple of forms. One is the authorization form and one is the WP Carry policies form. These are um, just documents that you sign to say that you're formally accepting your offer. It's nothing legally binding. You can um, decide to change your mind after you, after you sign your forms and make your deposit. The only thing is that the $500 is non-refundable. So if you do make your deposit to save your seat and then you wind up either going to another school or maybe you just decide to not join us for some other reason, you would forfeit the $500, but there's nothing legally binding about accepting the offer. After you've been admitted and you've made your deposit to save your seat, you will get an invitation to join our Admitted Students Facebook group. This is where you can network with everyone else who's been admitted to all of our specialized master's programs. It is where the majority of our students find their housing and their roommates for the fall. Um, none of our on-campus programs provide housing. That is a very important thing to note, especially if you're joining us from out of state or you're joining us from out of the country. You will be responsible for finding housing on your own. So the Facebook group is a great way to do that. I recommend doing that sooner rather than later. Um, the fall is a busy time. ASU has over 100,000 students at its main campus, so they do tend to take up all of the on-campus housing, but there are a number of apartments and houses off campus that are willing to rent to students on a short-term basis, so it's best to get that figured out early. After you connect with us, you'll also be you'll also start receiving communication from your student services representative. So your student services um, coordinator will be the person who handles all of your academic needs. They will be registering you for your courses. They will provide all of the details about classes. They will give you all the details about orientation. And then you'll also start to receive um, invitations to admitted student events. And then finally, you will have orientation. This is generally in the beginning to the middle of August. Orientation dates are not yet published for um, this coming fall, but as I mentioned earlier, it is a good idea to plan to be on campus by August 1st, just so that you can make sure that you're moved in and ready to go. Orientation is absolutely required for everyone um, joining all of our programs, so please make sure that you're here for that. We are not able to excuse students from orientation, so there are going to be um, Possibly two days of orientation. It depends on your situation. For international students, there is international student orientation, which is a separate day. And then there is orientation for um, just the finance program. So it's important to um, make sure if you are an international student that you plan to be at both days of orientation. For our students joining us from the US, um, our domestic students, there is going to be one day of orientation. And then finally, um, classes do begin generally in the middle of August this year. They started, I believe, on August 21st. So that should be pretty similar moving forward. But um, again, generally planning to be on campus by August 1st is a good idea. Um, one question that we get um, quite a bit is about our scholarship process. So in terms of being admitted and figuring out how you are going to pay for, for the program, 
students are automatically considered for small scholarships as um, part of the admissions process. If you are admitted, you will go into automatic consideration. Scholarships are merit-based. There is not a separate application that you have to submit. Everything is, um, we use everything that you have submitted for your admissions application to then evaluate you for scholarships as well. I do want to highlight we do not award any full scholarships for any of our Masters of Science degrees. Our average scholarship is about $5,000. So these are not life-changing amounts of money. They are just meant to offset the cost of some of your supplies and just to help out um, a little bit. So the average scholarship is about $5,000. Um, again, we are not able to award any full scholarships or anything like that to any of our specialized master's programs. So the majority of our students will be um, seeking funding from some other source, either um, getting private loans, federal loans, or um, working or, or saving or, or borrowing money from, from parents. Um, there's a number of ways that you can go about it, but just know that scholarships here are not for full coverage. We are not able to do that. Um, so when you are awarded a scholarship, it generally is in a, in a smaller range. In terms of accepting the offer, um, you, as I mentioned, you do have three weeks to do that from the time that you're admitted. So once you receive your admissions decision, you will also receive a date by which you need to make your deposit and fill out those forms. If you don't make your deposit and fill out those forms by those dates, you may lose your seat in the program. Um, to give you an idea, generally this program is between 60 and 80 students per year, give or take, and uh, of that we do receive anywhere between three and 400 applications. So um, just keep in mind that you are uh, applying for a competitive program here and um, accepting your offer formally is the only way to make sure that you um, definitely have a seat in the program for, for next fall. So we do give you three weeks, 21 days from the time you're admitted to make your decision. Um, if you choose not to accept your seat, then your seat would be released to another student at that time. And again, after you accept your offer is when you will start to receive communication from your student services team, as well as the invitation to um, our Facebook page. To get into the curriculum, so what will you actually be studying as part of the MS Finance degree? So as I mentioned, we do break our um, nine month program down into quarters. So there are four quarters, two in the fall, two in the spring, and you are in three classes at a time. So I won't read through all of these, but I will give you a, a few quick highlights. So quarter one and quarter two are in the fall. So those are the uh, classes that you would take in the fall. So you'll begin with FIN 509. You'll be in three classes at a time. Each quarter is about eight weeks long. And you will be in three classes for those eight weeks and then your schedule will change as you go into the new quarter. Between quarter two and three is the holiday break. We will get a little bit of time off and then you'll come back and do quarters three and four in the spring. So feel free to take a picture of this, do a screenshot, whatever you need. Um, this is also available on our website for the curriculum, so don't worry about it too much if you have additional questions. And again, this will be recorded, so you'll have access to it if you need it. There is one thing I do like to highlight um, in the red on the right side of your screen, you can see in quarter four, um, there is a choice for electives in the fourth quarter. So students in the fourth quarter will have a choice between taking either entrepreneurial finance, which is going to be for those of you who are maybe looking to start a business or go out on your own as a consultant. And then we do offer a brand new course, which is FIN 591, which is our artificial intelligence and machine learning course. So this course shows you all of the different applications that artificial intelligence and machine learning are playing in the field of finance. It is brand new, it is very, very popular. So if that is something that interests you, that is a choice that you'll be able to make. So you'll still be in three quarters or three classes in quarter four. Um, you'll simply just have a choice about whether you wanna take 555 or 591. Um, the rest of these classes, as you notice, are not um, elective. So you will all take, if you are admitted into this program, you will all take the remaining courses that you see on the screen. So you'll be all together for Q1, Q2, and Q3. And then you'll be together for most of your classes in Q4, with the exception of um, your choice here between uh, entrepreneurial finance or artificial intelligence. <clears throat> a question that we receive quite often is what the schedule looks like. As a word of caution, this schedule does change year to year and quarter to quarter, but it is um, generally what you can expect. So classes are offered, as I mentioned, Monday through Thursday. Classes are offered during the day. 
So classes can fall anytime between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. The schedule does change from quarter to quarter, and it also changes year to year. So this schedule here is the uh, is exactly the schedule that the students from last year's class had. So as you start at the top, you can see quarter one ran from August 15th to October 5th. They were in three classes. On Monday and Wednesday, they were in the same two classes, and then on Tuesday and Thursday, they were in the same two classes. So as you can see, as it goes quarter to quarter, the schedule does change quite a bit. You may have classes, like if you look at quarter three here, you may have um, quarters where you only have one class on Monday and Wednesday, but then your Tuesday, Thursday class goes all the way until six o'clock. So this is not exactly how it will look. The schedule is not finalized. It is, of course, dependent on the availability of the professors. So this is just a sample to show you what a, of what a potential schedule could look like. Um, one thing that you can count on, though, is that you will not have class at night, so your classes will not go beyond 6 p.m., and you will not have classes over the weekend. So you won't have class Friday, Saturday, or Sunday as part of our um, MS, MS Finance class. You can expect to be in classes between 15 to 20 hours per week in general, and then you can expect another 15 to 20 hours per week in projects, homework, and group meetings. We are very much a collaborative environment here. Your education will include a lot of group work and group projects, and of course that will mean a lot of meeting outside of the scheduled class time. So this is why we call it a full-time program, because you can expect up to 20 hours a week in class and then up to 20 hours a week doing your work outside of class. So. As you can see, it would make it difficult for a person to work full time, especially because the schedule does change every quarter. So we do generally advise students to plan not to work during this program because of how the schedule changes and what the course load looks like. Um, but if you are going to work, it is likely going to be in a part time capacity. <clears throat> and then finally, to get to our career outcomes, so I have included some of the sample titles and um, employers from this year's this past year's graduating class. This is not an exhaustive list by any means. This is just a sample. So there are a number of students that went to places and did and did uh, had titles that were not here on the screen. So some of the sample titles from last year's class: analyst, consultant, investment banker, underwriter, financial advisor, asset manager equity researcher and director of finance, and then some of the sample employers that are on the screen here are all from last year as well. Allstate, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Vanguard, and Intel. Again, these are just a sample, so please don't feel like these are the only places that you can work or the only places or the only job titles you could hold, but this is a pretty good representation of some of the titles and employers from last year. Um, in terms of average starting salary, we do see it that typically around $75,000 as a starting point. Um, again, as all of you know, this is widely going to vary depending on what kind of work you're doing. Somebody who goes directly to somebody who goes directly to Wall Street following the program is going to have a higher salary than someone who, let's say, stays in Arizona and works at a small um, investment firm would have. So you're able to do either. You're able to do both depending on what you're interested in. You will have a dedicated career coach who works with you starting at orientation to figure out exactly what it is you want to do. But in general for WP Carry, we do see about 90% employment by 90 days after graduation. So you are definitely um, coming to a program that is well regarded. You're coming to a program that does have a, quite a high placement rate for students. Again, if you are an international student, the program does come with 36 months of OPT. So you are able to work for three full years before you would need to start worrying about um, employee sponsorship. So for domestic students, um, I'm sure all of these companies look very familiar to you. Even if you're an international student, I'm sure these, these names are probably pretty big global names that you'll recognize as well. But very strong career management department, very strong um, career perspectives, as long as you commit to working with your um, career coach pretty much out of the gate. Again, of course, this is a short program, so the earlier you start making appointments with that person after you've been admitted, generally the better you do. We do have a number of large um, recruiter networking events that we hold on campus that is meant that are meant to expose you to recruiters from all different types of um, companies and firms. So we have tons of resources here. ASU is the largest public institution in the country, so we do have an, a very, very large number of resources to get you connected, but it is eventually on you to actually secure the job. So just as a, um, to give you an idea of some of the things that are possible leaving this program. 
And then finally, um, I'm, I'm getting ready here to open it up to questions, but I do want to just address some of the frequently asked questions that I do receive um, recruiting for this program. So of course, our finance class profile is always a big question. What does the average student look like? What are the minimum expectations? For the GMAT and GRE, if you do wind up taking one of those, we do not have a minimum score that we require, but we do operate on our averages. This year so far, what we're seeing is an average submitted GMAT score would be about a 600 and an average GRE score is about a 310. So we do take either of those exams. As I mentioned, we don't have a preference as to which one you take. If you are a student that needs to take one of those, um, these are the averages for what we typically see. Again, they are not hard minimums. We do not have a hard minimum requirement for either the GMAT or the GRE. We do have a very holistic review process. So once you submit your application, we are truly looking at everything with the same weight. So your essay questions, your letter of recommendation, your test scores, your transcripts, everything that you submit is given equal weight in the application process. If you are an international student who does wind up having to um, prove English proficiency, our average TOEFL score is about a 96. The university does have a minimum for this. We won't um, be able to accept any scores that are lower than 80, but again, to be competitive, um, the TOEFL score around 96 um, is what we typically see for this program, and that is by far the most popular English proficiency exam. Average work experience going into this program is about a year, but it does not have a requirement for work experience. That's just what the average tends to be. So we do have students that come directly from undergrad. We do have students that come from having some work experience. It is a mixed bag, but we don't have a minimum requirement. And then we do not have a minimum requirement for acceptance of your undergrad GPA, but we do see an average GPA of about a 3.5 cumulative. Again, with this, we do accept students from all majors, so we don't have any prerequisite courses. We don't have any required majors for this program. The only requirement is that you hold a four-year bachelor's degree or the equivalent by the time you would start the program. Of course, cost. Um, we've already spoken a little bit about how the scholarship process works, but of course, um, cost, the estimated tuition for the coming fall is broken down by your residency. So if you are a domestic Arizona resident, your estimated cost is about 38000 If you are a non-resident, so you're a resident of some other state, it is about 58000 And if you're an international student, it is about 60000 That is total estimated tuition fees. What those numbers do not include would be cost of living. So if you um, are planning on renting an apartment or perhaps getting roommates and um, you're going to want to include transportation and food and those kind of things. Those would be outside of the tuition um, and academic fees. So just please keep that in mind. In terms of deadlines, as I mentioned earlier, our deadlines do refer to having a completed application on file. So we've already passed our round one decision, which was October 1st. We've already admitted a number of students into the program. But our next decision is, or excuse me, our next deadline is December 3rd. So for those of you on the phone who have maybe started an application, if you are looking to get into the early decision two round, that will be December 3rd. And then we have a number of deadlines after that. I won't go through all of them, but one I will highlight is our international student deadline. February 4th is the last time you're able to submit an application if you are an international student, so that it's very, very important. If you're an international student on the call today, please make sure that you have your application submitted no later than February 4th. The reason that is so early is because there is a number of things that you will have to do as an international student in terms of uh, securing a visa, getting your I-20 figured out, all of those things. So February 4th is our deadline for international students. Domestic students, you do have all the way until June 30th, although the last time you will be considered for a scholarship would be April 4th. So please keep that in mind. We do automatically consider, of course, students for scholarships, which takes me to our final block here, scholarships and financial aid. Again, scholarships um, for students are typically on the smaller end. They are meant to just offset the cost of supplies. So the average is about $5,000. There is no application that is required. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, most students will use loans or outside scholarships or some kind of outside funding. We are not able to um, offer any full scholarships for this program. And um, you are able to apply for part-time work on campus. There are some GA and TA positions available, but these are not included in your acceptance. So these are things that you would have to apply to. After you receive your admission letter, there is a part-time job search engine that you'll be able to access after you accept your offer. 
but please know that none of these are included in your acceptance, so you would have to find them on your own. So before I open it up, I just want to address what, what comes next. So of course you can apply if you have not done so already, you can get the application started. We do not need everything at once. And what I mean by that is in order to apply, you do not have to have all of those pieces that we mentioned earlier. So let's say you're one of those students that has to take the GMAT or GRE, maybe you'd like to spend a, a couple of months preparing for that, that's totally fine. You can start your application without those um, scores. You just would not be reviewed until we have everything. It is a good idea to get started as soon as possible because sometimes it does take your recommender some time to write your letters. Sometimes you want to put some time and thought into your essay questions. Again, you'll want to wait for those scores, but you do not have to have everything in order to start your application. Your reference will not receive your letter of recommendation request until you've actually submitted your application. So again, um, it can benefit you to start the application earlier. If you're just waiting for one final piece to come in, that is okay. We don't need everything at once. Another way to stay engaged, you can continue to um, attend events. So we do hold events that are in person as well as online. You guys have all taken a great step by um, attending this session today. And um, to see what is coming up for all of our different programs, including the MS in Finance, you can visit wpcarry.asu.edu and it'll be slash calendar of events. So I'll leave that up here for a few minutes while I finish talking. Another thing you can do is stay in touch with us. Once you start your application, you can continue to read your emails and answer your phone. We do reach out quite a bit. You will be working with a recruiter one-on-one -on -one until your application is complete. So please continue to stay in touch with that person. Generally for finance, it's going to be me. Um, we can't help if we don't hear from you. So we're not gonna know how to answer your questions unless you get those questions to us. So hopefully you'll be able to stay engaged with us while you're working on the application. And then we are on all of the major social media networks as well. Um, of course, as an admitted student, you'll have access to our admitted student Facebook page, but we do have a number of videos on our YouTube channel. We are on all of the major social media sites. So again, keep continuing to attend events. Hopefully you are able to get your application started sooner rather than later. Um, again, there are a cap to the number of students that we can accept every year. So just please keep that in mind. At this time, I would like to open it up for our question and answer session. I will leave our general um, contact information up on the screen while um, we're doing that. So if you have a question, please feel free to use the chat feature and I will do what I can to um, answer those questions for you. So please go ahead and submit the questions by chatting and I will um, hopefully be able to answer those for you. So we do have a couple. Um, we have a question about how work experience can strengthen the CV or the resume. So if you're doing anything um, work-wise, if you are full-time employed, if you're part-time, if you have a, um, you know, internship, all of those things can help you on your resume. We do have um, the resume as a required piece of the application. Again, we do not have a requirement for work experience, so it is not a minimum requirement that you, that you have experience at all, but you can strengthen your application by mentioning relevant work experience. So maybe you managed a project, or maybe you managed people, or maybe you increased sales by a certain volume. So I um, would certainly encourage you to include anything that you've done on your resume. Anything that you've done at all can help you to strengthen um, your application. Uh, we have a question about the minimum duration of the optical practical, uh, optional practical training. So the program does come with up to three years of OPT for international students. You do not have to use all of it, but you can use up to um, three years before you leave the country or before you find sponsorship if you are joining us as an, um, as an international student. Great question here about our Bloomberg terminals. We do have Bloomberg terminals and as well as training for our MS and finance students. So yes, you will have access to those and you will be using those as well. They are in um, McCord Hall, which is our business building where all of your classes will be held. That is a great question.
Okay, another question about the success rate of GMAT GRE waivers. So um, I am going to assume you're asking about the chances of it being provided. These are truly provided on a case-by-case -case basis, so unfortunately I don't have any um, statistics about how often they are provided, but if you do meet one of those two criterias, I would say um, please request it. Please um, write in the essays why you think it should be granted. We do take those into consideration on a case-by-case -case basis, and they will also um, come down to what else you've submitted at the time. So if you have a strong letter of recommendation, and you have strong essays, and you have a strong transcript, and you qualify for the GMAT waiver, it is possible for it to be approved. Um, I don't have any statistics on how often it happens, but I can just tell you anecdotally, if you qualify for it and you make a strong argument for why it should be awarded, then it is a very strong possibility that it could be granted again, but it is never guaranteed. So just keep that in mind. Um, a great question here about if it matters which institution your four degree your four year degree comes from as long as it's accredited it does not matter at all we do not look at rankings in terms of where your degree is from um, as long as you have the four year degree and it is accredited um, it is not we are not going to say oh you know so so and so did it. Um, at Harvard versus another person who did it maybe at a state university. We are looking at the overall strength of your application. We are not weighing where your degree came from necessarily as far as, um, you know, rigor, um, as long as it is accredited. And then second part to that question was how an MBA can affect the coursework. I'm assuming that means if you already have an MBA. Um, if that's not what you mean, please feel free to correct me. But um, if you already have an MBA, it's not going to hurt you at all. Um, just please know that the, none of the coursework is going to transfer. So regardless of whether you have a master's already or if you um, do not, none of those courses, MBA or otherwise, will transfer into the program. So it can, um, it can show that you have a particular level of um, capability in terms of dealing with a rigorous topic, but the um, MBA will not, uh, MBA courses won't transfer. So in that respect, it won't um, make a difference in terms of what you have to take. Next question is whether there are student-run funds for finance students to participate in. This is a great question. We do have a class called the SIM Fund, which is an opportunity for finance students to participate in trading type activities. And there are a number of clubs that our finance students join every year that they are totally responsible for the budgets for. So ASU in general has over 1,500 clubs that students can participate in. You're welcome to join whichever one of those you're interested in. My personal recommendation is that you um, chat with some of our students who are currently in the program. Our ambassador's contact information is on our website. See what they're involved in and what they're doing. Those change every year, so they would be the best people to, to ask, of course. Um, the clubs are totally run by the students, so they are, you know, the presidents are voted in by students, the budgets are managed by the students, um, and there are a number that are concerned with finance as well. <clears throat> we got a question about application fee waivers for the um, MS and finance program. At this point in time, we are not able to offer any application fee waivers. Again, um, if you're an international student, the um, application fee waiver does, or the application fee does also include the cost of shipping that I-20 to you, so we are not able to waive that um, for this program. Another great question about whether students can choose both of the courses in quarter four. Unfortunately, you do have to choose one or the other. Um, the program is not set up to allow you to take both in its current form, um, so those classes are offered at exactly the same time for the most part, so there's not an option to take both, unfortunately. You will have to choose either one. That is a great question. Okay, great question about if you work full time, would you be considered for the program? You absolutely would. Our decision will not take into account the fact that you work full time, but it will be up to you in order to make that schedule work. So we will not deny or accept the student based on the fact that they are working full time, but the um, it will come down to you in terms of working out the schedule. The As a word of caution, you won't receive your schedule until pretty close to orientation. So you won't know until probably 
June or July what your classes will actually look like. So it can make a difference to um, you, um, but it won't make a difference to us in terms of you being um, admissible into the program. We won't, we won't be worried about that. We will assume that you will do the work to um, make it work around your schedule. <clears throat> and then a great question about non-traditional students that have a number of, of years of work experience. So we are looking at the type of work that you've been doing, um, the projects that you've been managing. We do recognize that some students are coming to us with a number of years of um, training or, or work experience. The work experience for this program varies significantly. So even though our average is only about a year, we do admit students regularly that have a number of years more than that. Prime example would be a student that graduated this past May. He was actually a physician before he started the program. He had 20 plus years of working in medicine and he decided that he wanted to leave the hospital environment and open his own private practice, but he did not have any of the business knowledge um, or accounting or finance knowledge in order to feel comfortable doing that. So he took a break. Um, he had worked already for 20 years, took a break to come learn in this nine month format how to handle the financial part of his business and then opened his own practice afterward. He was very successful in the program, um, had worked for, as I mentioned, 20 years beforehand. What we're looking for in a student um, with the non-traditional kind of profile is if you have worked, what kind of work has it been? Has it been um, in a field that might translate to finance? Has it been in a role where you're managing budgets? Are you managing people? Um, how successful have you been in that? So we are looking for achievement-based resumes. We do not have a maximum work experience requirement, so we will not make a cutoff if you have 20, 25, 30 years of work experience. You are still welcome to apply, absolutely. I'd invite you to please keep typing your questions in. I feel like this has been, there have been a lot of really great questions here. Um, I will stay on the line and, um, and continue to answer them for another 10 or 15 minutes if any um, come up. If you are done answering or asking your questions, I do invite you, uh, please go about your day, do, it, um, do whatever you need to do. This will be available as a recording. If you um, have been working with me, you already have my um, email address, but that email address that you see on the screen here is our general master's inbox for all of our incoming questions. So please feel free to reach out to us, call us, email us. We'd love to engage with you. Um, as I mentioned, I will be able to send this recording out to anybody who requests it. So please feel free to send me an email or send us an email here at this general inbox. If I've already been working with you, you already have my personal email. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'm available. Um, any time to pretty much answer any questions that you have and get this recording out to you. I do highly recommend if you are even considering the program that you begin your application. As I've mentioned a few times, there are a number um, of students considering this and we are only able to accept a certain um, number. So please, um, if you are considering it at all, please get the application started so that we can have a conversation and, and get you a decision. As I mentioned, just because you're admitted does not mean you're legally or, or obligated to, to attend by any means, but it means at least you could have a plan moving forward by receiving your admissions decision. So I will stay on the line for a few more minutes. If you have any other questions, please feel free to type them into the chat. If not, um, please feel free to log out. I hope you enjoy your day. I want to say thank you for, for joining me, and I will remain on the line. Um, have a great day, everyone. Um, I'll be on the line for another 10 minutes or so. So please uh, feel free to ask any questions or go ahead and log out as you see fit. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that this was informative, and I hope that you all enjoy your day or night, whichever the case may be. Please feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Thank you.
Okay, we've received a couple of additional questions, so I'm happy to go through and answer those. The first is about um, the CFA exam and preparing for levels one and two versus level three. So the levels in the CFA exam are all about the number of hours that you put into financial study. Because this is a nine month program and it is pretty accelerated, it simply doesn't cover the hours necessary to sit for level three, but you would be able to do additional study once you graduate to complete level three. Level three is exceptionally rare from the people that I've worked with. Um, generally, when a company or a firm is asking for you to be CFA certified or designated, they are looking for level one. Levels two and three get into much more of the um, philosophical sides of what the industry is, is doing at a given time. So there are outside courses that you can take to sit for level three. Our program is simply not long enough. It doesn't have enough hours to give you the, the preparation for something as in-depth as level three. That is a great question. Thank you for asking. And then another question about our um, December 3rd deadline. Would a recommender have time to answer the questions fully? Absolutely. So um, thank you, Alex, for asking. The December 3rd deadline um, is still a couple of weeks out, but the recommendation generally is only about a page long. So typically, recommenders are asked anywhere, um, depending on um, how well they know you and how in-depth they want to get. Um, into the questions, they are able to generally write a page to a page and a half and fully answer everything that we need. They are asked a very specific set of questions about how well you're able to handle um, the rigor of a quantitative program, how long they've known you, things like that, the standard questions. But it is in a format that they are able to answer pretty quickly. I've written recommendations in a very similar format for other, um, other students and in, in programs outside of ASU. And um, generally, the questions tend to be about the same, and I've um, been able to write for 20 to 30 minutes and fully answer everything that is uh, necessary. So definitely a good question, um, certainly something that's possible to be done. Um, the sooner you submit the application, the sooner they will receive access to those questions. Generally, from the time you click Submit and pay that application fee, they will get the email asking them to be a reference within 24 to 48 hours, and then hopefully they should be able to answer the questions um, within 20 to 30 minutes and about a page to a page and a half um, to fully answer it in, in detail. So great question. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll be, I'll be on for about another five or six minutes here. So if you do have any last minute questions, please feel free to type them in. I know we still have a number of people on the call. So please feel free to type any other questions you have. Um, otherwise, reach out to me um, after this. I would be happy to work with you in any, um, on any further questions that you have. I'm happy to see that a number of you have found this informative. Um, I know it can be a bit daunting and a bit scary to maybe apply or commit, um, but this is a great program, great university, great environment, um, and I'm really hoping that you will all choose to submit applications so that we can work with you. Um, we are here during the week at, at pretty much any time during business hours to answer any of those questions. Um, I really hope that this has been informative, and um, please feel free to answer, ask any of those last minute questions that you might have. Okay, one great question about whether um, the application can be done for the December 3rd deadline and then submit the scores later. 
Um, unfortunately, the deadlines do refer to completed applications. So we would need all of the pieces of the application on file to consider your application for that round. If you are not going to have the scores um, until after the um, December 3rd deadline, you would be moved into the following deadline because we can't evaluate you until we have everything that we need. So um, if you're not going to have the scores until after the deadline, you would be in the next round. But with that said, we still admit on a rolling basis. So from the time you submit your application um, in a completed fashion to us, we are generally able to still get you a decision within seven to 10 business days, um, regardless of what round you're applying in. The rounds are meant to be more of a guide for you to keep you um, moving through the application. Um, as a word of caution, if you are submitting things around the holidays, the university does close um, for Thanksgiving as well as the, the winter holidays, Christmas, New Year's. So if you're submitting around that time, things can be slowed down a bit, but um, generally speaking, we're able to get you a decision within um, seven to 10 business days from the time you submit a completed application. Great question. A uh, question about the deposit. So you will not be able to save your seat until you're admitted into the program. So that would be something that comes with accepting your offer. So once you submit the completed application, if you receive a positive admissions decision, that is when you would have the option to save your seat with the, the $500 deposit. So that will still come after the scores and after the, the admissions decision. So you won't have access to make the deposit until you've been admitted into the program and you won't be admitted um, or receive your admissions decision until we have everything that we need. So once the scores are in and once everything else is in, you'll sit tight for um, usually about a week or two until we get our decision out to you. If you're admitted into the program, that's when the option comes to save your seat with the deposit. Great question. I am going to go ahead and prepare to close down the session, but um, please feel free to contact us. Again, the contact info on the screen there, wpcarrymasters at asu.edu. And for those of you I've been working with, you'll have my email as well. Um, thank you all again for joining me. I hope this has been informative and I look forward to working with all of you. So take care. Thanks again.